How do you protect the world's third biggest rainforest from thousands of illegal loggers? The answer is new satellite technology, which now provides Papua New Guinea with the tools to monitor deforestation. Hi, I'm Regis, and if you're looking for an escape from the constant negativity of the news, then you've come to the right place. We've collected uplifting developments from science, technology, and medicine to leave you feeling a little bit more optimistic about the world. From affordable, sustainable aviation fuel to 3D printed skin that can close up your wounds, here are seven good news stories from all around the world. And we start in the rapidly changing world of artificial intelligence, where scientists have developed a smartphone app that can diagnose ear infections in seconds. In case you haven't heard, AI is changing the face of medicine. It can now accurately evaluate ear infections even more effectively than the experts themselves. We accomplished 94% sensitivity specificity and 94% accuracy in diagnosing a, an ear infection versus not an ear infection in children, which is quite good and better than most physicians are. The news comes say. out of the University of Pittsburgh, where a collaboration with the healthcare provider UPMC has produced a life-changing AI tool. It's especially targeted at young children who are particularly susceptible to acute otitis media, better known as middle ear infection. More than two thirds of children suffer from this illness in the first year of their life, myself included. The problem is that often this diagnosis is wrong. It takes seasoned professionals with years, even decades, decades of training to distinguish between middle ear infections and other kinds of infections. That creates two troubling outcomes. First, some children are not diagnosed at all. And second, some children are diagnosed incorrectly, meaning they're given antibiotics, which in the long run can weaken their immune system. This is what makes this AI innovation so groundbreaking. So the obvious question, how does it work? The program has been trained on more than 1,000 videos of inside the eardrum of babies. Using these videos and information from trained professionals diagnosing them, the algorithm was developed which was correct 94% of the time, as many as three times higher than the chances of an ordinary physician diagnosing middle ear infection. Though this technology is still in the very early stages of coming to market, if approved, AI-assisted ear exams will make pediatricians much more accurate in their diagnoses. Next, let's shift our focus to the aviation industry, where a major breakthrough could make carbon-neutral biofuels finally complete with petrol. Aviation is a huge contributor to carbon emissions. Worldwide, the industry accounts for around 2%, which may not sound like much, until you learn the statistics. To produce one ton of CO2 in your car, you'd have to drive for about 4,000 kilometers. Each year, the aviation industry emits 800 million tons of carbon dioxide, or enough to drive the distance around the world over 80 million times. I don't think Spotify has a playlist long enough for that road trip, but if you've got one, post the link in the comments below. This is why aviation has been a major target of climate change regulation for decades. However, cutting down on leisure, business, and shipping is difficult without impacting the global economy, especially with an average of almost 100,000 commercial flights per day. The answer may lie in the rise of a new kind of fuel source known as sustainable aviation fuels. Rather than fossil fuels like petroleum, which come from ancient organisms found underneath the Earth's surface, sustainable aviation fuels are created from renewable resources. This means that things like food waste or used fat and grease can be used to make fuel. While the aviation community has made commitments to transition to these fuels for years, mass adoption has been difficult because of high production costs. But now, newly published scientific research has changed all of that. It's proven that woody plant matter, meaning like waste scraps from sawmills and decaying forests, can be carbon neutral and affordable. The standout is a new method that the scientists call co-solvent, which avoids having to slowly break cell walls of plant matter into its three different components. Instead, a powerful solvent separates them automatically, essentially skipping multiple steps and leaving concentrated ingredients ready to be used for chemicals or fuel. I know this all sounds a bit complicated, but best of all, it's estimated that it'll slash the prices of sustainable aviation fuel from around $9.20 per gallon down to just $3.15. That's much closer to conventional jet fuel, which is sitting at around $2.50 per gallon. Soon, airlines may have no option but to make the switch, saving millions of tons of carbon from the atmosphere. While fuel prices are coming down in aviation, United Kingdom is looking to land a bold new renewable power project with a 1,500 square kilometer solar farm in Morocco. That's bigger than Hong Kong. 
The Sahara Desert offers a grand canvas for solar energy, which is why efforts to capture its power go back more than a decade. Covering just 1.2% of the total area could be enough to meet the whole world's energy demands. And while the United Kingdom is more than 3,000 kilometers away, it doesn't want to miss out on the scramble for the Sahara. The British energy startup X-Link has unveiled plans to build both solar panels and wind turbines in Morocco, where the very northwestern section of the desert lies. X-Link's project will cover around 1,500 square kilometers and has been billed at a cost of around $30 billion. Once up and running, citizens will feel the savings in their energy bills, as solar power is now the cheapest kind of electricity in human history. The project is expected to transition more than 1 in 12 UK households to clean energy. X-Link will fill the gap and allow for renewable power all year round, especially when there isn't enough wind or sun in the UK. That's a good thing, since sunshine isn't exactly something England is well known for. The vital question is how on earth this power generated all the way in Morocco will be transported to the United Kingdom. X-Link's answer is to lay down 3,800 kilometers of cables connecting Morocco to Devon in the southwest of England. We'll create a route over the Gibraltar Strait, past the European mainland and over the English Channel, ready to distribute to English homes. The startup has already raised over $60 million from energy companies, but will be looking towards government contracts for the bulk of the funding. Luckily, it aligns with the UK government's energy roadmap for the future, with a government minister calling it a nationally significant project. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video and want to keep receiving good news weekly, make sure to subscribe and enable notifications. That way, you'll never miss a new video and an extra dose of good news right onto your feed. Next up, we move back to the medical sector, where 3D printed skin can now close wounds. The number of synthetic engineering options for traditionally biological problems is growing every day. The latest of these comes from 3D printing, which could provide a solution to skin and hair treatment. According to research published by the scientists at Penn State University, it's now possible to create a 3D living layer of skin using a machine. We haven't quite reached the Terminator level yet, but it kind of feels like we're moving in that direction. Mm. Synthetic skin has been possible for decades, but the real breakthrough here is that all layers of this artificial skin can now bind effectively with natural skin, meaning it can be applied directly to open wounds to heal the surrounding tissue. This new method uses a bioprinter, which is exactly what it sounds like. A 3D printer that can manufacture things like tissue, blood vessels, or even entire organs. One of these is used to print two layers of skin synthetically. It's not completely synthetic though, it does originate from a natural source, namely human fat tissue. This tissue is then used to create two layers called the hypodermis and middle dermis, before being combined with a clotting solution to kind of stitch up the wound. That leaves one missing layer, the top layer, which is open for a natural layer to grow on top. Tests on rodents found that after a fortnight, the final top layer of skin had reformed above the synthetic ones. Not only that, but there were indications that hair was beginning to grow as well, something that had never been seen before in these kinds of tests. This could be a major innovation on the horizon for certain types of surgery, especially when correcting like permanent skin or hair loss. As medical innovation moves forward, one country is taking the final step to dismantle an old technology with Slovakia expecting to be coal-free this year. Slovakia has quietly been making huge gains in the fight against climate change. The country has been phasing out coal dependency and is on track to complete its goal by 2030, joining 22 other EU countries which have agreed to phase out coal. However, in a very unexpected update, the country now claims that this target will be reached almost six years early. So basically right about now. The announcement comes just a month after shutting the doors of its last coal plant, Boyani, which had been functioning for almost six decades and was once the largest in the former Czechoslovakia. The government is now considering turning the old Voyani coal plant into a giant battery storage facility, or a solar park, which would supercharge their green energy shift. Another government making big moves is Nigeria, which has introduced a world-first meningitis vaccine for its citizens. Meningitis is an often fatal disease that has devastated Africa for generations. Within just 24 hours of contracting it through bacteria or viruses, the brain can swell up and kill its host. Even for survivors, life is never the same. Seizures, brain impairment, and a host of other long-term effects after contraction. 
Thousands die every year from meningitis, which has the largest share in Africa, especially across the African meningitis belt, from Ethiopia in the east to Senegal and Gambia in the west. In 2019 alone, there were over 1,200 deaths in this region. Nigeria, which sits right in the middle of the region, has now made history by introducing the world's first vaccine against this deadly illness. The MEN5CV vaccine is delivered in just one shot and improves on previous versions available in Africa. While those only work against strain A, MEN5CV adds four more strains to that list, becoming the only one in the world to work against five different strains. Armed with the new vaccine, Nigeria aims to vaccinate over a million people in the 1 to 29 year old age group, particularly in the vulnerable northern part of the country. This led to a comprehensive plan of monitoring, testing, and increased training for medical professionals to fight against meningitis. And now for our final story, which takes us over to Papua New Guinea, where the world's third biggest rainforest could finally be saved. In Papua New Guinea, 20 years of work is coming to fruition in the fight to save the local rainforest. As far as biodiversity goes, Papua New Guinea is one of the most unique environments on the entire planet. Filled with tropical rainforests, and in fact the third largest in the world, it serves as a habitat for everything from echidnas to kangaroos. This has been under threat since the 1970s, when industrial development ramped up, including logging and road building. For decades, activists inside parliament have been fighting to install greater protections to stem the onslaught of destruction. Change came in February of last year, with legislation to protect selected areas under the Protected Areas Bill. Seems like an obvious enough name. Since then, an investigation has found evidence of ghost roads. These aren't roads haunted by ghosts, but instead by a much more real threat, illegal loggers. They allow trucks to secretly enter and cut down trees. These are popping up now faster than ever before. In research carried out by a team of scientists, an extensive mapping of 1.4 million square kilometers of Papua New Guinea found six times more roads than found on databases normally used to track deforestation. They also found that wherever a ghost road appeared, deforestation spiked in that area. In response, the team is now in the early stages of developing AI-assisted tools to automatically detect ghost roads. However, the solution may come from the fusion of ancient technology and new technology. With the help of the Aim for Forests program, technology has also been given to traditional custodians of the land, helping them to surveil against deforestation. Rather than patrolling these areas on foot, these communities are now assisted by high-quality satellites, giving them a view from both above and below. Which good news story from this week are you the most excited by? And did we leave out any that have caught your attention recently? Please let us know in the comments down below. We hope this video puts a smile on your face. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.